the Walther P99, PPQ, and PDP. Let's check it out. In 1938, the Walther P-38 was adopted into the German military right at the beginning of World War II. It's a double single action pistol, it has eight round mag capacity, and it was really a favorite among German officers. And then the P-99 was introduced in 1996, and up until last year was presently in production with Walther, and it also served the German military. The PPQ was introduced in 2011 and had purportedly one of the best striker fire pistols on the market. Uh, and it was discontinued in 2021. Then the PPQ was replaced by the PDP. Uh, this is really a huge upgrade from a lot of the other pistols, but one of the big things about the PDP is that it was designed for red dots. The ergonomics of this pistol, it allows you to find that dot really naturally. So we're gonna compare the P99, the PPQ, and the PDP. We're gonna look for their strengths and their weaknesses. And guys, honestly, I'm a big fan of the P99, and it really made me curious to look at the differences between these three pistols. But the Waller P38 is an elegant handgun, and not for a more civilized time. Now the PPQ I bought a number of years ago, and then the P99 I just recently purchased. And Walther sent the PDP for the original review. Walthers have been popular for a long time. Uh, and of course with the PP series, the PP, the PPK, the PPKS, uh, starting out in 1929, that's a James Bond gun and definitely legendary and used by German officers all through World War II and beyond. Uh, the Walther P99 was also used by James Bond in one of the movies. And so this particular pistol is one of the older models. In fact, it has a proprietary rail at the front. There's a lot of differences between these pistols and we're just gonna kind of watch the evolution. Again, I'm not saying that one's better than the other. If you have a PPQ and you love it, I'd recommend that you hold on to it. Both the P99 and the PPQ from everything I can find says that they have been discontinued and then they've replaced it with the PDP. The P99 continued in production mainly because it had military and police contracts. And they did offer a few here and there during that time if they had some overruns. But the P99 has pretty much been out of circulation to the main gun market for a while. Uh, you can find them. Uh, there are some things about this pistol that have really been surpassed uh, with modern technology and with a lot of styling. All three have four inch barrels. All three are 15 round magazines. Now there is a compact version of the P99. There are a number of versions and calibers of the PPQ, including a 22, a 45. Uh, but the PDP right now is only produced in nine millimeter, but it also comes in a four and a half, five inch barrel. And there's some differences with it as well. And all three have removable back straps or interchangeable back straps. Now before we get started, let's go ahead and drop our magazine. Again, 15 round magazine, chamber is empty. We're going to start out with the P99, but before I get into that, I do want to mention the P88. Uh, it was designed in 1983, very similar to the SIG P226. It entered into the U.S. military trials against the Beretta, and it didn't make it. Uh, it failed a number of different tests. 
so it never really went anywhere. When it came to the P-99, uh, in 1996, uh, these were produced, used by the German military, used by a number of different police agencies, still in use today. Uh, but one of the big things about the P-99 is that it has the AS trigger, or anti-stress trigger. It's a very unusual design, and it has an external slag-free decocker. Uh, in fact, this is the inspiration to the Canik TP9. And I am going to do a review coming up comparing this with the Canik. Now, one of the things about the trigger is that it is a anti-stress trigger, which means that this has been pre-cocked. So it doesn't have a really heavy trigger pull. So what we can see is it comes all the way back. And you'll watch, it comes all the way to the frame before the break. I mean, it is a long trigger pull. And then reset, I mean, reset is super fast. And that's one of the huge advantages of this pistol. Now, one thing about this trigger though, is that if I decide I have it all the way back here and I don't want to fire it, I can take my decocker, hit it, and it brings it out. Now it's in full double action mode. And so now it is a heavy trigger pull all the way till you get to the back again. Uh, this trigger in some ways is nice because it does have that really short reset. But to be honest with you, when you are pulling that trigger back, I mean, it is really long and you think maybe that the gun isn't cocked when you get it all the way to the back until you get used to it. And so a lot of police agencies love it because of the decocker, uh, because of the way the trigger is. I mean, you've got to, again, pull that a long trigger pull. But one of the things I've noticed is that when I pull this trigger is that my finger ends up riding on the trigger guard. And if you shoot it a lot, it'll wear on your finger. And that was just one of the things that I personally just came across. Uh, notice the slide serrations are very low. I mean, they're just on the lower part of the slide. So you don't really have that much on your slide serrations, but you know, they grab pretty good into your fingers. Um, the Picatinny rail, again, is proprietary on this model, but I have seen some of the later models with a slot right here, like your Glock. Squared off trigger guard with serrations. Uh, the grip is very minimal. In fact, it's very similar to the original P22 by Walther. And it has these little pyramids, but they are very muted. And it has a slight finger groove on either side here, then it comes down to an angle, which is typical for both of the other Walthers. And then again, we can interchange this back strap. But it is not very textured. There is not a lot of texturing when it goes to this grip. And it's the smoothest out of all the different Walther pistols. Of course, your takedown lever's here, and it's the same with all three pistols. You have an extended slide release right here. It's shorter than the other two pistols. And we do have a paddle mag release, which the M1 PPQ had the paddle mag release, but it was changed to the button or the M2. And I think they still offer the paddle mag release, but you just don't see them that often. While I love the paddle mag release, it seems like a lot of American shooters just aren't a big fan. But it's so easy to hit that button. You don't have to change your grip at all. It's one of the things I like about it. But again, the button is more popular. Of course, there's a lot of sight options, and you do have serrations along the top. Again, this did come in 40 caliber as well as 9mm, and it, they do offer a subcompact version. Now with the PPQ. Again, we're going to drop our magazine, check the chamber, and it's empty. 15 round magazine. Uh, the mag button right here, or the mag release, is just that put, push button mag release. Uh, originally, when it was offered, it did have the paddle, but the button was definitely much more desirable. Uh, it does have front and rear cocking serrations, and they're a lot more aggressive than the P99. And then, of course, with the front serrations, there's none on the P99. Uh, the accessory rail, we have three slots, a squared off trigger guard. Uh, you do have some finger grooves right here as well. And while the texturing is better than the P99, uh, it's still very muted uh, compared to a lot. Uh, but it does have a very ergonomic grip to it. And it's one of the things I loved when I first got this PPQ. Uh, one thing that I did was put Talon grips on it. But when I'm comparing it with different pistols, the Talon grips just kind of took away. Uh, but typically, I would rather have Talon grips on here. It gives it a lot more texturing and a lot more grippability. 
Uh, you have an extended slide release here. And again, we have that takedown lever that's right here at the center. And we'll take a look at that in a minute. And the button can be switched to the other side. And it does have ambidextrous slide stop. Of course, with the sights, there are a lot of options. This, these are just the stock three-dot sights. Uh, but there are, again, so many different options. This has been a very popular handgun for Walther. And so a lot of people have said, why in the world would they discontinue this? And that's because the PDP takes care of all the different things <laughs> that the PPQ offers. These were designed again in 2011 and discontinued in 2021. Now, they do offer some of the match versions still, and they are under production. But as far as the basic PPQ, even though this is still on the Walther website, there's a lot of different models. But this is being discontinued. And guys, I'll just tell you, uh, when I found this P99, I mean, it was at a premium price because these are getting more and more scarce. And right now, while these are still reasonably priced, uh, this would be a great gun to pick up as an investment. Now, the PPQ trigger has been considered the best trigger out on the market for a striker fire. And you have the trigger shoe, and so we bring it in, and then a really nice crisp break. Reset really fast. And so this trigger is just a sweet trigger, and it really uh, was evident when we went to the range. And again, they do make a number of different models of the PPQ, including a compact version and long slide version and a lot of others. Next, we have the PDP, and this is brand new from Walder. We're going to drop our magazine. It is a 15 round magazine and the chamber's empty. Now, I did leave the red dot again on the site because this gun is really designed around shooting a red dot. Uh, but it has, again, a lot of the same features as the original PPQ. One of the big things, though, is the grip. Uh, it has a lot more aggressive texturing. I mean, it almost looks like carpet, but it is really uh, very aggressive, and it feels great in your hand, and it doesn't wear on your hand. Uh, it does have that beaver tail, and they, all the Walthers have that. And pretty much the grips are all pretty much the same in angle and dimensions, even when it comes down here to this little lip that comes down, which really helps when you're firing the pistol. In fact, if you'll take your pinky and tighten up, it lines up that red dot sight naturally. And that's one of the things that was a big deal with Walther is to make this grip very complementary to the red dot sight. The serrations are really deep, and this is called Super Terrain serrations. I mean, they are easy to grab and very beefy. In fact, it makes the slide look a lot bigger than even the P99 or the PPQ, and yet it weighs the same. Actually, maybe even a little less, because there has been some metal that's been taken out of the inside of the slide. We have a three-slot Picatinny rail. We have texturing on the squared off trigger guard. Uh, we have our mag release right here. It's really easy to get to. Uh, you have that same as the PPQ. Your slide stop is extended and it is ambidextrous and you can switch magazine releases to the other side. Uh, your takedown lever is the same as all three of the different pistols and we'll break down one just to show you. As far as the red dot optic, it does come with just a plate. Then you order the mounting plate for whatever red dot you're using. Sights, just the three dot sights, but there's going to be a lot of different options, uh, night sights and fiber optic, different things. When it comes to the trigger, it's pretty much a PPQ trigger. But honestly, this has been a little bit of an upgrade to the trigger. So we have that same trigger shoe right there. And then when we bring it back, right there. I mean, it is a nice crisp break. Reset real fast. Then again, at this point, there is a four and a half inch barrel, and then there's a five inch barrel for this, and I'm sure we'll see other calibers coming out. The guys lining up these grips, I mean, they are all pretty much the same angle. Uh, some of these have different size back straps, so that could make a little bit of a difference. With the PDP, you have no finger grooves, which I really like, and I like that texturing on the front. But as far as the angle itself, it's all pretty much the same, even the lip on the bottom. Now, the PDP and the PPQ, you can interchange magazines, but not on the P99. It's a different magazine system, and part of that has to do with the paddles. Now, the weight on the P99, 1 pound, 8.6 ounces. Weight on the PPQ, 1 pound, 8.4 ounces. The weight on the PDP, 
one pound 10.2 ounces but you need to take away the 1.5 ounce holosun site and that would bring it to one pound 8.7 ounces so really close in weight and we really appreciate fioki for sponsoring the ammo all made in the usa one of the largest suppliers of ammunition in the country and we also want to thank lula loaders the mag lulas are awesome at the range Now, when it comes to the range, we wanted to shoot all three side by side. We wanted to get a feel of the recoil impulse, how they shot, the trigger, just the shootability, the ergonomics of each pistol. We first started out with the P99. And, you know, guys, honestly, it probably shot the flattest out of the three. Uh, there's something about the way this fits in your hand, even though these grips are very similar and this is much slicker on the sides. There's something about this gun. It's just a very pointable handgun. Uh, the one big downside to this firearm is the trigger. Uh, it's really long and then you think you're not even sure, you know, if, if it's been set and you go all the way almost to the back of the frame before the break. And so it's a really unusual trigger. Of course, with that decocker system, you know, which again started out with the Canic. The Canic copied the Walther P99 with its first designs. And so it's a real close copy to the P99, except in looks. Honestly, the P99 is a totally different look. Then we went to the PPQ, and there's something about that trigger that made me want to shoot it a little faster, even though I was really trying to have the same cadence, because I wanted to get a feel again of the comparison between the three but the trigger is so nice in the PPQ. Being so nice, and yet the P99 has such a really long trigger pull. I'm really not a fan of the P99 trigger, but I'm a huge fan of the PPQ trigger. But then we come in with the PDP, and the PDP definitely is just a different animal, and part of it is because of this sight right here. Uh, the sight does add a little bit of mass to the back of the slide, and so it seems to recoil a little bit more, just a little bit more muzzle flip. But I think a lot of that had to do with the camera angles. Uh, something about catching that sight. Because really, as far as shooting, especially the PPQ and the PDP, they were very similar. And yet, the PDP has a really excellent trigger. And if you'll notice, I end up shooting it even faster than the PPQ. But it's funny, all three of these guns have very similar frame designs. And really, very similar weight on the slide, but there's just something about the PPQ, but even better yet, the PDP. A more pleasurable gun to take to the range. But I'll tell you guys, the P99, it really shot flat, and I was very impressed. Even though this grip is a lot smoother even than either of the others, and yet that trigger pull is definitely the bottom of the list, but there's something about the way this gun shoots that's just different. It definitely has less muzzle rise. It just shoots flatter. Now, as far as disassembly goes, drop your magazine, check your chamber, uh, and then you want to pull back just a little bit and drop this little lever and then pull the trigger and the slide comes right off. And that's the way you do it with all three of the pistols. Now we're going to take a quick look at the interior. I'm just going to show you a comparison between these. Now we have the P99 at the top, the PPQ, and then the PDP. Uh, guys, honestly, there are very little differences between the overall designs. A lot of the same features that came out of the P99 went into the PPQ and then the PDP. The ejector on the PDP is definitely larger and beefier, but overall, pretty much, I mean, these are very similar pistols. And then here with the slides, same thing. I mean, the basic design differences are very minimal. Uh, you can see there's a little bit of a difference with the P99 at the top, uh, the PPQs in the middle, and then the PDP. But overall, except for the relief cuts right here in the top of the slide, and then here at the back, uh, that's going to lessen the weight of the PDP because there's extra weight on the outside of the slide. But you can see, I mean, they're very similar. And then here with the barrels, same thing. I mean, the cuts are identical. Uh, the P99 at the top, the PPQ, and then the PDP. Recoil springs are a little different. It looks like the PDP has a shorter recoil spring. But overall, I mean, these are pretty much the same type designs. Also, one thing I thought was fascinating, you can take your PPQ slide, put it right over your PDP frame, and vice versa. And with the magazine inserted, it does lock open. So really, these 
should be compatible with each other. I haven't actually seen anything that talks about it. I have not shot them that way. But from what I've heard, these are interchangeable. The P99, I would be slow to do that because of the decocker and some of the other differences between the two pistols. But it could possibly fit on there as well. So guys, to wrap things up, you've got more aggressive texturing on your grip. Uh, you have more aggressive texturing for your slide serrations and all the models are gonna come optics ready. Uh, when it comes to the PPQ, it's a more aggressive grip than the P99, but yet it's still somewhat muted and it really lacks a little bit. Uh, it was really good to see the more aggressive texturing on the PDP. Slide serrations are really nice, and they are front and rear, but you get just a little bit of an upgrade with the PDP. When it comes to the P99, we have a very muted texturing on the grip. Uh, we have very low slide serrations, uh, and of course the trigger is not anywhere close to the PPQ or the PDP. And with this model in particular, the accessory rail is proprietary and, of course, later models they had it. All of them have different configurations with these pistols. All of them have back straps. All of them are 15 plus 1 in the magazine. All have 4-inch barrels. And to be honest with you, they're all very similar in design. And so it's just the differences that really change things. And most of those are honestly exterior. But these have been very popular for years. There's a lot of holster options. There's a lot of sight options. And so it gives you quite a bit of versatility between these. And so any three of these that you own, I mean, it's still a good solid handgun. And that's one of the things about Walther. The quality is excellent. The foundation was good. They've just moved it up into another level. While the P99 and the PPQ are no longer produced, uh, these are still excellent firearms and have been produced up until 2021. But when the PDP was introduced, it really stood above the rest. Uh, as far as shootability, designed for a red dot, with a lot of the different features, uh, the more aggressive texturing, uh, there's a lot of things about this pistol. But it doesn't take away from the PPQ or the P99. I mean, all three are excellent handguns. But if I only had one, I think the PDP would be my choice. But having them all three is like icing on the cake. Oh yeah, I don't want to forget about my P38. Now we really appreciate Sportsman's Guide for being one of our sponsors. And they give a $20 off every $100 or more purchase using Such, no zero zero. And they have all kind of outdoor related, camping, hiking, you name it, they've got it. But one thing that I use them probably the most for is their military surplus from around the world. And if you join their buyers club, you get a better price and you get free shipping on most items. So check out Sportsman's Guide, it's a great resource. Be strong, be of good courage. God bless America. Long live the Republic. Replaced by the Walder, and then replaced by the Walder PP. Then <laughs> the PP. Oh, that's not, that's a different pistol. Now we're going to start out with the P99. The P99. Let's do that again. <clears throat> I got some water. And again, these were designed in 1911. Here with the slides with the P99. Whoops. <laughs> Somebody's gonna cringe going banging those around. All the models come optics ready. Uh, when it comes to the PPQ, and I've got those backwards. The hardest part about this video is getting these three guns to sit up here like this where it doesn't look goofy. <laughs> this looks goofy. Pick a card, any card, before my hand wears out.